The HP Slate 7, the company's re-entering the tablet market after its previous unsuccessful attempt with the touchpad. Instead of going with a premium device, HP is trying a different tactic with the budget price Slate 7. But at $169.99 retail, we're going to see how it fares against similar Android tablets, mainly its chief competition, the Nexus 7. The Slate 7 is, as its name suggests, a 7-inch tablet. And even though it's a budget device, HP is trying to use premium materials whenever possible. There's a nice stainless steel backing um, that gives it some much needed stability. And there's a pretty nice um, soft touch back, which feels relatively luxurious at first, especially for a budget tablet. Um, up here at the top, we've got the power button on the side, the volume rockers, and these are all stainless steel as well. So they're trying to sort of spend money where they can on this. There's an unmarked uh, micro SD slot at the top along with the um, headphone jack and there's slightly conspicuous Beats Audio branding towards the bottom, which we'll get into a little bit later. The 1024 by 600 display is egregiously bad. Um, the pixel grid isn't even square, so it's a bit like things have been pulled across like taffy. Um, if you look closely and if you're familiar with the way the flat Android 4.1 UI is supposed to look, you'll notice that the circles are more like ovals. Everything's stretched by about 4%, which doesn't sound like much, but it's definitely enough to be noticeable. In addition, in really bright light, the display is adequate, the colors look fine, but the fringe field switching technology that HP has elected to use instead of more standard IPS uh, means that at even the slightest angle, um, the colors get noticeably washed out and it's a bit difficult to look at. The Slate 7's No Frills dual core processor um, looks better on paper than it actually works in practice. We notice some stuttering on simple tasks like uh, web browsing with Chrome and just using the launcher. Um, and even the accelerometer has some performance issues when you're switching orientations from vertical to horizontal, there was considerable stuttering. So when it comes to cameras, I mean, we don't necessarily recommend that you use your tablet as a camera, but if you absolutely must, um, know that you won't be getting much with the Slate 7. The rear camera has um, a three megapixel sensor, which isn't great, but the biggest sin is the fact that it lacks an autofocus and an exposure adjustment. So you pretty much have to hope for perfect lighting and an extremely steady hand when you take your photos. The front-facing camera is a VGA camera, and it's basically good for little else besides extremely blocky video chatting. In terms of battery life, actually, it's nowhere near the performance of the sort of the 10 hours you get off the Nexus 7, but in continuous video playback, we managed to make it to nearly five hours, which um, aligns neatly with what HP promises. And it just casual use, like streaming music through Pandora, or web browsing, checking email and Twitter and stuff like that, we went almost seven hours. So battery life is one of the Slate 7's stronger elements. At $169.99, the Slate 7 doesn't quite stack up compared to its competitors, primarily the Nexus 7, which retails for about $30 more, but is a much better bet. HP was hoping that with the Slate 7, it had its little Android tablet that could, but sadly, it's more of a little tablet that couldn't.